We're familiar now with Newton's second law of motion, which says that the net force applied to an object will affect that object's acceleration, and how strongly it affects the acceleration is the constant its mass, so F equals ma. We saw that that was pretty straightforward to apply in simple scenarios where we had one object that was being accelerated by a net force. But in this video, I want to just start to think about how the law applies if we have multi-body systems. So what if we have more than one object which are connected and then we apply a net force to that system? So for example, I have a blue block drawn here and a green block and we can imagine ourselves applying a force to this system. Well, for starters, let's assume that this uh, surface is frictionless. So you can imagine ice on ice or something like that, but assume that this surface is frictionless. And I first want to clear up one kind of misconception or something that we're all prone to think. We tend to think that we need to apply more force to something if there's more friction. And that is true because our net force has to overcome the frictional forces. But it's important to keep in mind that we also need to apply more force to accelerate something that's of a greater mass. So for example, suppose these two blocks were not connected by a rope and the blue block, which is twice as large, will be twice as massive. We would have to apply twice as much force, even on a frictionless surface, in order to get the blue block to accelerate at the same rate as the green one. So if I disconnect the rope and I apply twice as much force to the blue one, now these two blocks are gonna be uh, accelerating at the same rate. And again, we have to s assume that um, if this block has mass m, then the large block has mass 2m. So it has twice as much mass. But now going back to the situation where these two blocks are attached by a light rope, how should we start to think about this system in terms of net force and acceleration and mass? Well, if we're simply asking ourselves how fast this system is going to accelerate, we actually don't care that it's made up of two separate blocks. We're applying one force to it and we're trying to accelerate a certain amount of mass. So we could just treat it as actually one large single block. So for example, imagine stacking the two blocks. We have one, essentially one block of mass 3m now and we could apply a certain force to it and it will accelerate at a certain rate. So in what cases will it be more interesting to consider these two blocks as separate and being connected by a rope? Well, what becomes interesting is we can consider the tension that is existing in this rope. We might be able to consider, if we did not have a frictionless surface, we could consider the friction on the two blocks separately. They might be made of different materials. And later on, we'll get to situations where we even do interesting things like throw these blocks over pulleys and stuff. So let's start by asking ourselves the question, what is the difference between the applied force and the tension in the rope? Because you might be tempted to think that, of course, these are along the same line of motion and they're kind of dealing with the same masses. So you might think that the force you apply is all transmitted as tension in that rope. But that's not the case because some of the force you apply is being used to accelerate the first mass. So there's less force remaining, if you will, which is the force of tension in the rope. And that amount of force is being used to accelerate the second mass. So we know that tension is just a force. So to summarize what I just said, we know that the force that we're dealing with is split between our masses. And it's not necessarily split equally because in this case we have two different size masses. It's split proportionally. So only some is transmitted through the connecting rope. If we think about acceleration though for a minute, these are of course both vectors, we do know that the acceleration of the system is all the same. Right? Assuming our rope doesn't stretch, it's impossible for the two masses to have different acceleration. So that piece of information might come in handy when we can use acceleration to kind of translate between our masses, if you will. I think the key question for solving these sort of problems will be to consider our formula of F net equals mass times acceleration and make sure we're thinking about the same thing all the time. So we could ask ourselves the question, what force is accelerating what mass? So in other words, if I'm talking about the total force that I'm applying, well, that force is accelerating both masses. So that means I have to have a force number that applies to the total mass that will give me the acceleration of the entire system. 
if I am talking about the force of tension, the force of tension is only being used to accelerate the second mass, even though the rate of acceleration is still the same. So keep in mind the rate of acceleration is the same for every piece of our system. But the force of tension is only being used to accelerate the second mass. So we can use information like that and just make sure that we are applying something equally to our formula. We're applying it fairly. And you wonder, might be wondering why we study things like this because we don't just pull blocks on frictionless surfaces for fun. Of course, we can add friction to the picture and then we can look at friction separately between the two blocks and then, again, make sure that the force of friction we're using, we're applying only to the right part of our system. But imagine something like a semi, which is towing a double trailer. There's a good example of this, situ this situation. We can look at the overall total force pulling that system, which is the horsepower provided by the semi-truck. And we also could figure out, for example, how much force or how much tension has to be endured by each hitch pin in that scenario. Because the first hitch pin, of course, has to pull both trailers, whereas the second hitch pin only has to pull the second trailer. And that's basically very much the same as this sort of problem.